That was awesome. Harry, how about that, buddy? Congrats. Let's go, Marvin. Dead turkey, fellas. You know, as we go through our Turkey Season 23 series, we try to be as informative as possible. We try to learn from the birds, learn from our own mistakes, and then uh, share that with everyone. And we love to share information. And I think the podcast series that we did this past spring, we had 10 different guests between Working Class on DeerCast and the 100% Wild podcast. We did an OG series and also the Longbeard Legend series. And if you look at guys like Ray I, Will Primos, Toxie Hayes, Ernie Calandrelli, Chris Kirby, Ron Jolly, Harold Knight, Michael Waddell, and yours truly, collectively as a group, that's over 450 years of turkey hunting experience. Well, we've got a series of podcasts between 100% Wild and Working Class on DeerCast, over 10 hours of unbelievable turkey hunting truth bombs within that series. Check them out wherever you listen to your podcast or you'll see them within DeerCast. Check them out. It's the most information that's ever been done, in my opinion, in one series of podcasts. Welcome back to another episode of Turkey Season 23. This one's a special one. We got Rob Keck in camp. And these are some of the last hunts from last year. Just an awesome, awesome ending to last year's season. But next week, we're bringing you all new content. Forrest and his dad had a great trip down in Florida. Myself and Dustin just got back as well. Mark and I are headed down to Texas, and we're gonna get after those Rios. Can't wait to bring you content from this year's Turkey Season 23. So coming at you right now, we're in the great state of Iowa. We got Rob Keck, Carson, and Mark here in Iowa. Then we're gonna bounce down to Chad Kilmer down in Missouri and uh, just an awesome, awesome four hunts. You're not gonna wanna miss them. But before we jump into those hunts, I wanna talk a little bit about Hunter Specialties calls and the ones that we're gonna be using this spring, specifically the HS Final Roost pot call. All throughout spring, we have a whole arsenal of HS calls, but one of my personal favorites is the HS Final Roost pot call. You know, I love that thing, you get loud. We do a lot of running and gunning, so it's a perfect call to strike those distant birds. One thing that I like most, about the HS Final Roost pot call is that it ain't gonna break the bank. It's an inexpensive call, but sounds so lifelike. It's got the sycamore bass, real henny sound to it, aluminum face, real high pitch, make those gobblers gobble when they won't gobble at anything else. But we also have the mouth calls to finish those stubborn gobblers. Like I said, we have a whole arsenal of calls, all for different purposes, all for different reasons. So next time you're passing through your local Cabela's or Bass Pro, hop in there, get you one of those HS Final Roost pot calls and get after them this spring. Now we're gonna jump into the hunts from last spring. All right, Carson and I had fun this morning, but no luck. Got close on a new piece of property, but uh, birds uh, eventually came to about 75 yards, went to the next piece. Now I'm waiting for Mr. Rob Keck to arrive. He should be here any second. Uh, he just flew in, driving down from the airport, and Carson took Taylor back to the airport. So. Uh, once Carson's back, we're going to go get in a blind or go chase some turkey, see what we can find out. Hopefully we can have some luck with Rob. This is going to be a fun time. I've always wanted to hunt with Mr. Keck. He has killed birds in 49 states. He's probably seen more turkeys die than you can possibly imagine. So it's going to be a pleasure to listen to him yelp, listen to him uh, work some birds and just shoot the breeze about turkey hunting. It's going to be a lot of fun. Rob Keck, cannot wait, one of my all-time heroes. came from South Carolina. He's been all over the country already. And I'm so excited to have him here in Iowa. Not any more excited than I am. Let me tell you, I've looked forward to this time for a long time. Not just this year, but we talked about it several years ago. We have. And uh, here it is, finally. And can you believe it's the first week of May and it looks like March? It does. <laughs> Rob and I have been buddies for, gosh, two and a half, three decades. Yeah. But we've never turkey hunted together, so. And, uh, I can tell you, there's no better place than to share the love of this sport than sitting in a blind with somebody that shares that passion. You know, there's people that turkey hunt, and then there's turkey hunters. And those of us that are passionate about it, that hunt, I mean, from when it opens in March till, well, I'm gonna end up the first week of June in May, 
God, that's awesome. I mean, Maine. in Maine. And, uh, you know, it's just, people say, don't you get tired of it? No. 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 You get tired. You don't get tired, tired of it. <laughs> Let's go ease in there. I don't want it to be over. I'm ready. Yeah, I talk to some people say, oh man, I'm glad it's over. I'm more out. I said, what? Stop right there, young man. Not for turkeys. You want an Oreo? I'm telling you. I have not had these. These are good. I'll lay down here. Closer there too. Oh boy. He's definitely on a mission now. One of the best pieces of advice, you were talking about advice when we were coming up here earlier. We hunted Missouri this morning. We almost killed one. Had some great encounters, but we didn't. But what's been enjoyable for me has been the conversations we've had. That's been a gift to me, is just to hear, you know, Rob's thoughts and tap into that history a little bit. But one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was from Paul Sexauer. I probably would have been like 16, 17. And I sat down with he and Joe, and they were the noted turkey hunters in my county. Mm -hmm. And this and was in Missouri. This is in St. Genevieve County, yeah. Missouri. And Joe Sexauer, the younger brother, told me, he goes, you want to know why Paul kills turkeys? He goes, because when he walks through the woods, he's about to kill one in any second. He goes, no matter what he does, he's thinking he's about to kill one in any second. He goes, he's always ready, he's always focused, and by the time he's done hunting, he's drained. Yeah. And I've always hunted that way. That was one of the best pieces of advice. You know, being ready with you and me is different than a lot of, let's say, neophyte turkey hunters. A lot of guys, they'll just sit there with their gun across their lap. With me, I'm using the decoy. I'm gonna have my left shoulder pointed right at the decoys, yep. not like this. Then I'm gonna have my knee propped up that I can really rotate that gun off of. And it's always on my knee. So that if that turkey shows up by surprise without gobbling, mm -hmm. all I've gotta do is just lower my cheek into the gun and I'm, You're ready. I'm ready to go. They, they don't do. always come gobbling in and give they you do. a warning every 30 seconds. They come quietly. And the thing about turkeys that people misinterpret is their vision is so good and you're not going to see them coming because they're coming over that hill and this is what they see with. They don't see with their whole body. They look and then they're gone the moment they see stuff. I think people spook a lot of turkeys and don't even know they spook. Absolutely. Up periscope, down periscope, gone. and gone. Gone. And you know, I've oftentimes wondered how many times a caller has set up at a location mm -hmm. and had a turkey that came in from behind him and then saw him moving, maybe to pick up a call. Never alarm putts and just eases on back out. I know it happens more times than what we ever would want to admit. Yeah, it does. They're good at living, I always say it. They, they, they really are. They really are. And I guess that's part of why we keep going back, because we try to break that rule. We do. It's the ultimate chess match, so let's go have another one. Let's do it. Let's get after that checkmate, All shall right, we? I'm ready.
I've said from the start, I looked more forward to the stories and the time with Rob than the actual hunting, and both of them have been fantastic thus far. Well, great hunting and great stories. You know, Mark, life goes on with many, many different people you cross paths with, but there are always a few that stand out, that are special, that share that same passion. You're one of those, well, and I appreciate it. I buddy. appreciate that. Thank you for the pre this privilege to be here on your place to take this beautiful Iowa God. Well, Terry and I have always thought the world of Rob. He has just always been so kind to us. Even when we first got going, Rob Keck was the same to us then as he is today. He's a very kind gentleman. It's easy to see why he did the things with the National Wild Turkey Federation that he did. When he started the National Wild Turkey Federation, that was in 81 when he took over. When he started as the, the president and CEO, there were 10,000 members. When he left and retired from the NWTF, there were over 500,000. And uh, that shows you the scale that he was able to do across some 30 years as the head of that incredible organization. He also oversaw the comeback of the wild turkey. He raised over three quarter of a billion dollars for conservation. He's named one of the top conservationists of our time. And uh, it, he doesn't get the credit he deserves because this, this man, the turkey and the turkey industry wouldn't be the same without Rob Kett. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, buddy. Took a team, though. It took a team it to did. get it done. You're correct in that, but you were ahead of the. You were the quarterback, buddy. Thank <laughs> you, you were. You were Peyton Manning out there calling oh, all the man. shots. Good job. What a beautiful turkey! I'll tell you what. These turkeys are so big. Golly, they can't get over the size of them. I mean, just look at this. Awesome. The beauty. Somebody said, "Are you tired of it?" We don't ever get tired of it, but we do get tired. So any turkey hunter out there can relate to that. You're never tired of it, but boy, do you get tired during turkey season. Absolutely. Good job, buddy. Congratulations, Rob. Thank you again. Mark. Yes, sir. All right, well, here it is. Today is May the 10th. Myself, Perry, Mark, Rob, and Wade are going in to a well-known location. We got some birds we roosted here last night. We're gonna be sitting on top of a big ridge. We're gonna hope that they fly down and work their way up towards us. Rob will be on the call, Mark will be on the call, and we'll Perry and Wade with cameras, and I got the gun. So with any luck, they'll work their way up the ridge into the HDR decoys, and we can get a crack at one of these. We'll see. We just broke into the timber here, and uh, Perry and Rob are gonna sit in this back, back area. Myself, Wade, of course, I'm gonna go forward a little bit. Birds are about 150 yards down the ridge, Never go wrong at Hot Corner. We love this spot. There's something about sitting in the hardwoods that's just different in that car. Oh yeah. Hard to beat it. Of course, it's been working his tail off producing turkey season 22. He killed a turkey last week in Iowa. His first bird. Now we're gonna try and see if we can't get him another one this morning. You got Rob Keck over your shoulder here, Perry with him. All five of us are gonna have some fun in here this morning at Hot Absolutely. Gonna be a special morning. You Jack. I'm Jack, buddy.
Good job calling picture perfect. That, that was, was enjoyable. That, that, that mouth call sick, bro. <laughs> sick. <laughs> Beautiful. Hey, keep your chin up. We're gonna kill the next one. Sounds That's what good. I told him. So let's go get on another one, buddy. Yeah. It happens, don't it, Perry? No. <laughs> 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 Kiss of death. He just absolutely cursed himself. This is this is it. Hey man, smile. Come on. It's all right, yeah. Look, I know what it feels like. I've been there. It's rough, man. Just remember. You can go from the outhouse to the penthouse in a matter of minutes. <laughs> but then you can go back down to the outhouse again, too. Man, what an incredible morning. And uh, we all felt bad for Carson. And frankly, we were like, this can't be right. We went back, reviewed the Tacticam footage, and what do you know, that crosshair was on that turkey's head. We went and shot the gun and it was indeed off to the left, so it might have got bumped, something happened. For whatever reason, the gun was off a little bit. We shot it a few times, got it back on, we're back in the race, Carson's back up to bat. I'll be his defense attorney in this particular case. Prosecution, you don't have a case. Carson was on that turkey's head. Those ones have pellets in it? I sure hope so. Awesome, dude. Man, three, four calls. I kept switching calls, switching calls, fighting, a lot of hand cutting, and we finally got it done right up here in the creek bottom. We were here yesterday, called in a bunch of jakes, 
the big boys stayed back. Today, a different story. Dead turkey, fellas. Nice call. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Come on. Nice. Congratulations. I appreciate it, guys. <laughs> the smile cannot get any wider. Redemption Hollow right here. Congrats, buddy. What a show. Man. That was awesome, wasn't hey, it? Hey, man. Proud of it. Thank you. I appreciate it. We put a little confidence back in. We shot that gun. Yes, sir. Hammer. We got a flopping turkey now. Man, oh, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Good job, buddy. What a morning it was. You know, you built some confidence when we stopped and took a shot. In fact, two shots just to make sure you knew where that gun was. Right. To give you the confidence to make the kill. Absolutely. We had a, two classic hunts today. This morning off the roost, they roared into Rob's calling. Here, we got into a bottom field. Rob and Perry stayed back. He did more calling and started pulling these up the edge. And I mean, it just worked out like a charm. And, Carson made the second shot of the day and we're very proud of you and I'm certainly pleased and happy with all the work you've done on Turkey Season 22. This bird is hard earned, buddy. I appreciate it, man. Special morning being able to share it with everybody sitting here. It's, it's you know, special, to share man. the experience, it means so much. It's something we can all talk about for years to come. Absolutely. You know, we went from the penthouse to the outhouse to the penthouse right here today. We Absolutely. did. We did. Absolutely. Feels awesome. good, man. Feels good. Congratulations, buddy. I appreciate it, Mark. Thank you all you guys. You know, we talk about it, and we've been talking about it all year, just the importance of making sure you're active in the turkey industry. National Wild Turkey Federation, Turkeys for Tomorrow. Go to your local banquets. Support any conservation efforts you can that your state is doing. These resources are precious, and they can provide moments like this for generations to come. But we got to make sure we do the right things today as sportsmen so that it's ready for tomorrow. Well. I've oftentimes said we want to put more back than we ever take away. Absolutely. This segment of DOD TV is brought to you by Cold Steel, home of the ultimate hunter, the perfect outdoorsman's blade that also makes an excellent everyday carry knife. Practical, functional, and incredibly capable. For more info, visit coldsteel.com today. Well, good morning. It is uh, 5 o'clock. It's 72 degrees out. Myself, Perry, Wade, Carson are heading out trying to uh, get on some birds this morning. There's something about turkey hunting that literally drives you crazy to the point that you can be so tired, so fatigued, but you just don't want to miss a hunt. We've been running and gunning all day long, working on getting food plots in, but we're selfish enough that we won't sleep in because we don't want to miss that gobble, we don't want to miss the fun, and uh, that today is that case again. We got things to do in the field, but at least the first two or three hours here, we're gonna get out, get after them, and uh, see if we can't put an Iowa gobbler on the ground. Fun stuff, all four of us are looking forward to it, and uh, hopefully we can have some fun this morning. Here it is. That's a jig.
How about that, buddy? Congrats. You're sweating. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hot, humid day. And we just made it happen out here in Iowa. That was fun. We actually started on some birds, set up on a plot where we had pictures. They were a little too far. Didn't make it happen. Got around on them, came completely around on them. Got to this little cove here. And I mean, they just came and worked like a charm. We do the best we can for food plots, predator management, fire burning, habitat management, and then when it's time to turkey hunt, then we get busy. And we were busy this morning. That was fun. Let's go take a look at him, guys. I'm gonna get my tag out. Food plots going in. That feeling just never gets old. That's exciting, isn't it? They came. I was afraid they weren't going to separate because they were pretty close and I actually took my my FTS and put it on the left fringe of his head to make sure it was plenty far away from the other turkey and it was. He went down and here's a, here's a wrap to my Midwestern season. Well Wade, we had a good one here this morning. We did for sure. It, you know, we got into the right position and uh, you let out a few yolks and they came on a string. There's nothing better than turkey season. We started in a blind, didn't work, and I said, man, why don't we go get mobile? And everybody was like, yeah, let's go. What are we waiting on? Everybody was thinking the same thing. We went and got mobile, got with the turkeys, and what do you know, we get one to, to pull in, and it was just great. Last year, we did the Turkey Season 22 series, and uh, it was just awesome. The response and the views were fantastic. We appreciate everybody tuning in. Well, here we are with some hunts left over from last year that we're gonna bring to you as we get prepared for Turkey Season 23. Turkey season is here and DeerCast has you covered. Use maps to mark your hunting spots, roost trees, strut zones, and more. And prep for your hunts with our advanced weather tracking and wind tools. Prep, predict, and pursue with DeerCast. One of the beauties of wild turkey hunting is how many different tactics you can use to kill a wild turkey. And I think this episode really exemplifies that in the fact that we've used a lot of different tactics here in the first 20 or 30 minutes of this episode. Number one, we sat in a spot with Rob of an afternoon where turkeys often feed before they go fly up. And that's a tactic that works well. We had decoys out and more often than not, a turkey's day, they start on the roost, then they fly down, they do all their mating, then they start walking and feeding. Midday, some days they're just shading, they're not doing a lot. And then in the evening, they will often go to a food source, much like a white-tailed deer. However, it's earlier in the afternoon than a white-tail. It might be four or five o'clock when they're hitting those open areas. They're gonna feed, they're gonna strut, they're gonna gather up, then they're gonna go back to roost. That's a tactic we use for Rob. Then you look at that classic roost hunt. We were about 100 yards from the turkeys. There were several birds roosted together. We heard hens in the flock, and then Rob poured it on them. What a classic way to get turkeys interested and pull them right into our laps. Unfortunately, the shot did not take the turkey down, but that doesn't take away from the moment that we had together out there listening to the greatest symphony in the outdoors. Well, we got on our horses then, started covering ground. We went to a known strut zone. It gets back to how does that turkey's day break down? When they first fly down there with the hens, and oftentimes they'll head off to a pretty place to strut and try and attract other hens. That's what we did. We used the cover and the terrain, got in there with them, used the trophy toms and calling. Rob sat back. Uh, yet another tactic, he was 50 yards behind us, pulled those birds down the edge, and then Carson was able to make it count. And then finally, myself, we used that exact same tactic. Started out early, birds didn't work, everyone can relate to that, and then suddenly we got on birds that were ready to go. That period between 8 and 10 o'clock the last few years has been very, very active and very productive for wild turkey hunting. Now we're going with Chad Kilmer and Chris Comstock. These guys have been killing turkeys for us on Drury Outdoors for probably over 25 years. They're in a spot where they've had birds day after day. They're going back to the well for another drink. Hopefully today's the day that this bird's going to strut within range and Chad gets that shot. Well, here we are again at this new farm that me and Chris, uh, we came here and hunted yesterday. So we've moved this morning. And, uh, which will mean they'll probably go to where we were yesterday and we're gonna sit here and watch them at 150 yards. But hopefully not. They're calling for 20 mile an hour winds today. It's starting to sound like it's getting here. You can just see the top of the fan. 
Sitting out of nowhere, Chris was like, Oh, turkey. Saw the fan. Boy, they worked so slow until finally he couldn't take it anymore. He just saw the saw the Avian X uh, Jake and we came right in. Oh, that was fun. I knew on a cold morning. Well, we're tagged out and turkey season's a wrap. I feel like I was a little off of my shot. I just didn't feel like I something, but oh, well, I hit him good. I definitely hit him good. So I got totally. Oh wow! I don't know, Chris. This might be the best bird bird I ever got in my life. Ah, sure feels good to be sitting behind this big old boy. Me and Chris come to this place for the first time yesterday and uh, we were kind of in the game, but kind of never in the game. So this morning we moved to where they were yesterday and with some good calling, Chris just lured him right in. Took a long time. He was just worked slow and slow and slow. Didn't want to leave those three hens. But finally, about 30, 40 yards away from the decoys, he couldn't take it anymore. He made the break. Went right for the Avon X Jake decoy. So there you have it. Four big Eastern gobblers down for turkey season 22 content that we brought to you guys as a teaser. So next episode, we're going to have turkey season 23, fresh content. Good luck to everyone out there who's going to be turkey hunting this year and also to everyone who is turkey hunting right now. We're going to be coming to you from Florida, Nebraska, and Texas. Good luck everyone out there. Be safe. Go kill a turkey. new videos every week so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content this segment of dod tv is brought to you by avian x turkey decoys fuel the madness <laughs> <laughs>